everybody, Chris here from ProjectOption.com and welcome back to the video series on trading vertical spreads. Up to this point, you've learned the basics of the four vertical spread strategies and you should have a good understanding of how they work. Now we're going to start talking about some more specific topics and in particular, we're going to start by talking about time decay's role in the profitability of these vertical spread strategies. So let's go ahead and get started. So how does time decay, or the decrease in extrinsic value as time passes, play a role in the performance of the four vertical spread strategies? Now I'll answer this question by starting with a definition of something I'll call the extrinsic value law as it relates to vertical spreads. Now the extrinsic value law related to vertical spreads means that for a vertical spread to reach the maximum profit potential, or for the spread to reach the price that will realize the maximum profit potential, the extrinsic value of the options in that spread must reach zero dollars. Now this might seem a little bit confusing, but don't worry, we're going to go through a bunch of examples to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and start with a hypothetical example. So for this example, let's say the stock price is currently at $153.91, and we go ahead and look at the 150, 152 and a half call spread. Now at the time of looking at the call spread, the spread's price is only $1.68. But we know that the spread's value could rise to $2.50 if it is fully in the money at the time of expiration. Because remember, a spread can only be worth as much as the width of the strikes. And in this case, the strikes are $2.50 apart and therefore the maximum value that this spread can reach is $2.58. So since this call spread is fully in the money and we know it can be worth $2.50 at a maximum, why isn't the spread currently trading for $2.50 if it's fully in the money? And the answer is that both options still have extrinsic value remaining. So as we can see here, the 150 call is worth $5.88 with $3.91 of an intrinsic value and $1.97 of extrinsic value. And the 152 and a half call is worth $4.20 with $1.41 of intrinsic value and $2.79 of extrinsic value. So as we can see, both of the options in this call spread still have plenty of extrinsic value remaining. Now interestingly, when we calculate the price of the long call spread with intrinsic value only, we can see that the spread's value is $2.50, which is the width of these strikes. So since the 150 call has $3.91 of intrinsic value, and the short call in this case, which is the 152 and a half call, has $1.41 of intrinsic value, if you take $3.91 and subtract $1.41 from that, we get $2.50. So just including intrinsic value, the long 150, 152.5 call spread is worth $2.50 of intrinsic value. Now why does this matter? Well, with a stock price right at $153.91, we know that the 150, 152.5 call spread will be worth $2.50 at expiration if the stock price stays right here. Now, as we've seen before, the call spread is currently trading for $1.68. And as we've discovered, both of these options have lots of extrinsic value remaining. Now, what's gonna happen between now and expiration if the stock price stays right at $153.91? Well, the answer is that these options are going to decrease in value and at expiration, they will only reflect the intrinsic value of the options. So in other words, if the stock price stays right at $153.91, the only thing that's gonna happen between now and expiration is the decrease in extrinsic value, which we call time decay. Now this is important because when trading vertical spreads, the passage of time is a critical component to reaching high profit levels as option prices trade with less and less extrinsic value as they approach expiration. Now this is really important to understand because when you trade vertical spreads, you'll typically start by focusing on the directional aspect of that spread, at least initially. So for example, if you buy a call spread, 
you know that you want the stock price to increase and ideally you want the stock price to blow through your call strikes because you know that's going to generate profits for your position. However, you also need to consider the extrinsic value or the amount of time remaining until that spread expires. Because if you get that directional movement that you're wanting, you might not have the profits that you thought you were going to have because those options are still going to have a lot of extrinsic value if they expire in a couple weeks or a couple months. So that's something we're actually going to talk about when we discuss choosing an expiration cycle, but this is kind of just setting the stage. So to help you solidify what I've talked about in this video, I'm actually going to hop over to the trading platform and show you some P&L estimations based on the passage of time and movements in the stock price as they relate to the four vertical spread strategies. All right, so for these vertical spread P&L examples, let's look at Facebook options in September of 2017. So right now, as of this recording, the September options in 2017 have 51 days to expiration, and Facebook shares are trading right around $165. So let's go ahead and start by analyzing a bull call spread and look at the P&L estimations now and at expiration based on different Facebook prices. So let's start by looking at the 160-175 bull call spread. So as you know, the bull call spread means you're buying a call option and then selling another call option at a higher strike price in the same expiration cycle. So for this example, I'm going to look at buying the 160 call and then also selling the 175 call against it. And that is going to create our call vertical spread using the 160 and 175 call options. Now let's go ahead and just say that this spread is trading for $6.50. So when we hop over to the risk profile, we can see two different lines here. So this blue line is the expiration payoff line. So this is what is the P&L of the spread going to be based on Facebook's price at expiration. Now, since this is a bull call spread, if the stock price is at or below the long call strike price at expiration, we will lose the maximum amount, which is the exact amount that we're paying for the spread. So since we paid $6.50 for this spread, if Facebook is at or below $160 at expiration, we will lose $650 per call spread. And then we can see that based on that lower left-hand corner. It says minus 650 at September 16th, 2017. Now this pink line right here is actually the P&L estimation of this call spread based on Facebook's share price today. So in other words, right now Facebook is right around 164.50 and as we can see, we don't really have any profits or losses because if you buy the spread for 650, you know, it's not going to fluctuate in price very much if Facebook stays right here. However, let's say Facebook fell to $160 per share today. Now based on that move, this P&L estimation is showing that we would lose $155 per call spread. Now that's good news because that means if you buy a call spread and the stock price moves against you quickly, you're not going to have the maximum loss potential of that spread. So based on this graph right here, this is saying that if the stock price goes to 160, we're expected to lose about $155 on this spread, but if Facebook's at 160 or below at expiration, we know we will lose 650. So the loss is very minor if the stock price moves against you initially. Now the bad news is that since we paid $6.50 for this $15 wide spread, the maximum profit potential at expiration is $850. Now that occurs if Facebook is at or above 175 at expiration. And it was, as we can see, the lower left hand corner says that at any price above 175, the P&L is going to be plus 850. However, let's say you bought this call spread today and Facebook's at 165 and it shoots all the way up to 175 today. Now that pink line says that we're only expected to profit by around $360. So that means if the stock price moves to the short call strike price, we're going to be up about half of the profit potential that this position has. Now the reason for that is because we know that we need this spread to lose its extrinsic value. So to reach that 850 profit target, we need Facebook to move up to 175 or higher, but we also need time to pass. So let's say we were one week before expiration. So let's go to September and go to September 8th. So as we can see here, this pink line 
is now much closer to the expiration payoff line and that's because one week before expiration these options are going to have much less extrinsic value so before if the stock price moved to 160 it was estimated that we would be down 155 dollars today but if facebook is at 160 dollars with about a week to go until expiration now this pink line is saying that we'd be down about four hundred dollars so closer to expiration same price we're down more money because there's less extrinsic value in these options and on the other side if facebook is at 175 with a week to go before expiration this estimator is saying that we will be up around six hundred dollars and before it said we were going to be up about three hundred and sixty dollars so this just shows that when you trade vertical spreads you want the stock price to move in favor of your spread, but you also need time to pass because as time passes, extrinsic value is traded out of the options, and that means you will have a higher probability of reaching the higher profit targets for your spread. Now let's go ahead and just look at one more example, and let's look at a bull put spread, so a short put spread. So let's say we wanted to sell the 160 put and buy the 150 put, and let's say we're collecting $2.50 for this spread. Now let me just change this date again really quickly. So as we can see here, our maximum profit zone for this trade is if Facebook is above 160 at expiration. Now as we can see, that blue line says that if Facebook is above 160 at expiration, we will make $250, which makes sense because this spread will expire worthless and if you sell a spread for $2.50 and it expires worthless, you make $250 per spread. So right now, Facebook is around $165. And as we can see, this pink line is the estimation of this profit, the P&L of this spread based on Facebook's price today. So let's say Facebook's share price shot up to $170, $171. So if the Facebook price went to $171 today, this PL estimation says that we would only be up around $100 out of the maximum $250. Now, conversely, if the stock price fell all the way to $150, we would only be down about $360 out of the maximum $750 loss. So, as we can see here, even if the stock price moves against you or for you, the amount of time left until expiration is going to be a large factor in determining how much how much profits or losses you have on that position. So like we did before, let's go ahead and jump ahead to a week before expiration. And as we can see, this PL line is actually much closer to the expiration line, and that's because it is closer to expiration. So now if the stock price went up to 171 with a week to expiration, we would be up around $240 out of the possible $250. So this just shows that if the stock price moves for you or moves in favor of your spread and you have very little time left until expiration, there's a good chance that you're going to have near the maximum profit for that vertical spread. Now, on the other hand, if the stock price moves against you and there's not much time until expiration, you still are going to have a loss pretty close to that maximum loss potential. But you know, unless you're right at expiration, you will still have a little bit left to lose. So... The moral of the story here is that when you're trading vertical spreads, you not only need the stock price to move in favor of your spread, but you need time to pass because as time passes, the options will trade with less and less extrinsic value, which will allow your spread to reach the maximum profit target. All right, well, I hope you found that video helpful. This wraps up our video on time decay and vertical spreads. So let's quickly recap what you've learned in this video and then move on to the next topic. So for a vertical spread to reach the maximum profit potential, the extrinsic value of the options in the spread needs to reach $0. Now that happens with the passage of time and favorable movements in the stock price. So the key point to take away from this video is that when you trade a vertical spread, there is a directional component to that spread which is highly important, but keep in mind that even if you get that outcome from the stock price, you still need the extrinsic value to come out of the options in order to hit that maximum profit potential.
So when trading vertical spreads, just keep in mind that you not only need a favorable movement in the stock price, but you also need the passage of time to help you with the profitability of that spread because as time passes, the options will trade with less and less extrinsic value, which will help you if the stock is moving in favor of your spread. Okay, well that wraps up the video on time decay and vertical spreads. If you have any questions on this topic, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about how changes in implied volatility plays a role in the profitability of vertical spreads. I'll see you there.